Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Bernie. It's my pleasure being here. Thank you. Likewise. So it was always good interacting with you uh, while you were working on Coca Cola project and a lot of other projects which had the difficulty of uh, you know using IoT devices as well. So I think you were extremely passionate about IoT as well, right? I that that's something that I very fondly remember. And uh, the product, right? AI Tutor, it has taken uh, good shape. We know that product building won't be easy, but that's an amazing thing that is going on now. And you and Shubha, if I remember, were the front runners. You just started that AI Tutor product, right? Very good. And um, once again, uh, you are doing extremely well. That is what I understand from uh, your data science career standpoint. And uh, how did it all go, Sukumar? You being from aeronautical engineering, uh, I should say slightly away from programming, right? Yeah. Or maths and stats, which many people feel is a prerequisite to get into the field of data science. Uh, how did it all happen? Can you throw some light? Uh, sure, Bernie. It all started like, uh, okay, in the aeronautical engineering itself, I'm interested in uh, a part uh, where electronics is mo mostly, you know, um, focused. So it's known as avionics, where, you know, we have to program uh, certain electronic devices to function in a certain way. So um, even my final project, it's with uh, ISRO, uh, SHAR, uh, right now, Sriharikota. So there I have gone through one particular, uh, uh, you know, department known as uh, reaction control surfaces. It's mm -hmm. also uh, mostly, uh, uh, you know, a type of uh, electronic device which works in the back end using programming. So that was the first interest uh, uh, towards, uh, you know, the programming concept. And I was actually interested in, you know, uh, working on computer, uh, seeing different things work. And I'm also interested, passionate to understand why it works in that way. And then I came into this and uh, you know, first I started with learning small uh, C programs. And uh, when I came into the real time, I observed that, you know, the technology is way beyond C and uh, right now the emerging technology is data science and uh, AI. So that's where my passion started and uh, that led to, you know, this path. And uh, I'm really happy that I'm currently exploring it and enjoying the, uh, you know, uh, things I'm learning. Wonderful, wonderful. And Sukumar, I also know that you worked uh, initially as an intern, right? And then you uh, worked on the real world projects for Innodata Takes. Yeah. And then you eventually have become a trainer with us. And, uh, you know, a lot of amazing feedback I used to receive, right? Pertaining to deep learning and AI concepts, because those are considered to be slightly difficult concepts in comparison to the regular data science algorithms, right? So how did that help shape your career? Do you think that uh, students have to work on such real world projects to be able to uh, gain that confidence to clear the interviews or what is your take on it? Uh, yes, Bernie, actually, whenever we say the real world project, right? I would see it as an opportunity where we can explore, uh, you know, different elements of a project. It's not only about running a program. It's more like discussing with the client, like what they want, what they have, and what we can get from that. Because the internship, it really helped me. Like uh, uh, for the AI tutor, I believe, we know that, uh, you know, what we had was very less data. And... Uh, we need to understand like what data should be collected in order to achieve it. Similarly with the Coca-Cola, like we had, uh, uh, you know, given uh, a statement, uh, user problem, we just want to solve it. So we need to understand the user. So once we understand it, then, you know, whatever we are learning, we, we have learned will be implemented and we can get it. So the first step of any, you know, real time project would be the challenge of working with, a uh, you know, another person who may not know your field. So once, you know, he uh, gives you the, uh, uh, the other person will give you that information, you start processing and then you will be trying to, you know, apply whatever you know, so that, and once it is done, again, uh, we usually uh, interact with the user on a timely basis to get the feedback and to understand whether we are in the right path. Because 
you know going one way will not uh, uh, you know work in uh, real time projects that's the important thing uh, when it comes to the internships or any real time project and um, results again uh, when it comes to the user he will argue with you why to use our you know product we need to be confident so you know when we build this complete uh, project end to end in the internships some go to another client the process only steps would matter develop is will remain uh, same so yeah. that's how i've seen it absolutely sukumar and i still remember i think uh, with uh, hindustan coca cola beverages private limited right when we have done that project you were there for the entire uh, 24 hours or how much time were you working continuously <laughs> so there was a day um, where you know some higher administration people uh, had to visit the unit and uh, uh, the production manager requested us to deploy it uh, uh, if it is possible so we tried very hard uh, and uh, you know at least we were we have given them 60 to 70% on that day and uh, the next thing uh, in the next later week we have uh, provided but yeah. yeah these things are challenging absolutely so when you work on real time projects especially uh, some demanding clients right then this is how it's going to be and and uh, that was a very good experience is what i felt because i was every now and then calling shirish to figure out what happened why did you guys work overnight and things of that can then he was like you don't know you're not on ground <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you don't ask those questions right well, okay fine you are handling as long as you are handling i'm okay kind of right that's that that was a very good experience and sukumar if you were to give uh, just one key suggestion to our students to get into this field of data science because they get trained right and uh, a few people you know they want magic to happen <laughs> so as soon as the training is done i want a job i paid money for the program i need a job so uh, we keep coming across these kind of issues as well right and uh, there are a few people who don't even work on one project end to end or they hardly work on a single project and when they put that on their resume obviously resume might not get shortlisted because when someone sees looks at the resume if they see that there's only one project uh, that a person has worked then they lose the confidence in that resume uh, these kind of issues we are encountering so from your side because you already crossed that particular path what would be one single uh, suggestion that you want to give to our students to get into this field of data science while there are many just one key thing uh, according to you okay. i mean many things come in my mind Uh, but the key thing that i uh, always uh, flourish is you know working on while working on projects how we explore it and uh, how we you know uh, get into uh, you know their shoes like whoever is the user and finding out the solution and um, i would say due to the higher competition in this particular data science field uh, when you approach any company you know you need to understand that uh, the, the for a single vacancy there will be many people who are competing so you should never disc- uh, get discouraged about that uh, only thing it's like a chance that you have you were given and uh, you should uh, you know uh, keep on uh, uh, you know trying for uh, the better uh, you know position and um, and once even if you get into a job of a big data scientist also uh, what i have seen is that you need to continuously learn and keep on learning so that you will get updated to the current technology because what we have learned in uh, let's say 5 years or 6 years ago it's long gone now nobody is uh, you know working with that so i mean yeah core concepts basics will be basics but technology is evolving so uh, we need to uh, uh, you know uh, move on with that and we should be continuously uh, upskilling our uh, you know uh, skills and knowledge so that would be the core uh, you know thing in this uh, industry absolutely well said so one key point which sukumar is saying is friends do research right when you work on projects without research it doesn't work out if you are working on a project and if you are able to handle that without any research that means it's not a real world project it's not a business problem at all it's a solved thing you are just redoing it even if you put that on your resume your resume will not get shortlisted because as uh, sukumar is rightly saying there's a lot of competition out there 
So you need to ensure your resume stands out. And one way to do that is by working on real world projects. Okay. And real world projects would be real world projects. The problem is not easy to solve. You need to do thorough research to solve it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Kumar, thank you so much. And I've been inviting each time you to set the news <laughs> and each time you discount me. Huh? <laughs> I think like that. Please come. Uh, our yeah. new Hyderabad office will be inaugurating it uh, very soon, maybe next month or so. Okay. So I would, you know, invite all of our, uh, you know, past students and who, whoever got jobs, especially, right? <laughs> so that we have uh, some kind of a get together. Sure, so Kumar, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much for your time once again. And it's lovely uh, seeing you and meeting you. You put on a lot of weight, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the part to reduce it now. <laughs> sure, sure, Sukumar. Thank you so much.